and welcome to the 6-5 Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners of Futurum Research, and on behalf of my team at Futurum and the team at More Insights and Strategy, we're glad to have you. In this fireside chat discussion, we've got More Insights' Patrick Moorhead sitting down with Dr. Lisa Sue, the CEO and president of AMD. Their conversation revolves around innovation and transformation in the enterprise. Since taking the helm at AMD, Dr. Sue's accomplishments have been impressive. In fact, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they're really nothing short of legendary. But don't take my word for it. Let's go see what Dr. Sue has to say. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to the 6-5 Summit and helping us officially open the show. I really do appreciate you joining us today. Hey, Pat. It's great to be here with you. Um, I'm really happy that uh, you and Daniel are having this and uh, really looking forward to it. Thanks. And I know it, it'd probably be better to do this uh, face-to-face, but we all know what's going on and that's just not uh, a possibility. So let's let's dive in. Uh, so digital transformation, you know, I, I love this buzzword. It's, it's been here for about five years. I'm curious, uh, you have a lot of interaction uh, with enterprise uh, customers and partners. Uh, what are you hearing from them right now? You know, Pat, um, I think none of us would have expected that 2020 um, is what it is. And, um, you know, the fact that, you know, we have had, you know, this unprecedented time and and everything going on. Um, I will say that um, it, it's really been um, really interesting um, as we uh, spend time with customers and, and partners. What you find is people are really now understanding how core digital transformation is to the business. You know, it, it, it is um, it is essential to everything that we do. And um, it gives you a real appreciation of the technology that we're working on and what we can do with it. And whether it's work from home or schooling from home, or it's, uh, you know, how do you connect? I mean, frankly, I connect with more customers now than I did, um, you know, last year, just because I, I've cut out all that travel. And, uh, you know, it's become acceptable for us to do, uh, you know, video chats and, and uh, conversation. So I, I think the, the fact is digital transformation is here to stay. I mean, the pandemic will come and go, um, but the um, the abilities that we have, the efficiencies that we gain, the uh, capabilities um, that brought in are, are what makes it so, so important um, to uh, to everyone, really. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, and it's really on, on, on three sides. Uh, you have the manufacturers making rapid changes, uh, hardware, software, and services, uh, you have um, the customers, uh, the end users who, who had to get used to this as well. And then uh, you had IT and the businesses all having to move at the same time. It, it, it's been incredible. Uh, so I think uh, we all have personal examples. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about this before of how to pivot from working, learning, and I like to add governing uh, from home. Uh, has has caused uh, huge shifts uh, in in behavior. Not all of them easy. Uh, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on on those that are are fleeting? Let's say in the here and now, and, and those that stick uh, after. Let's say we found a vaccine and and people are comfortable and and safe to go out. What what is the new normal? Yeah. So look, I've been um, incredibly impressed at what, you know, frankly, all of us have been able to do. I mean, if I just take, you know, AMD, for example, we have about, you know, 12,000 people and we pivoted, you know, like many of our, you know, tech peers to work from home for about 90 plus percent of our workforce in, you know, like a minute. And, um, you know, the fact is um, the products are still getting built and, you know, we're we're making tremendous progress on the roadmap. Um, You know, we're spending a lot of time with customers. We're spending a lot of time with partners. And I think that's that's true for for um, a lot of tech. You know, we've we've really been able to move very very quickly to um, let's call it the current normal. Um, yeah. Now, you know, that being said, Pat, I'm a I'm a big fan of um, you know in person activities. I like uh, seeing people. I like spending time with people. Um, I, I I think there is a desire. Um, you know, for us to return to more of a balance. So yeah, we may not travel as much as we did in the past, but um, I'd love to see you in person, you know, and, and we're probably like, whatever, five miles away from each other, but we're doing it uh, on, on video. And um, and I think what it, it um, has put a premium on is the relationships and trust that you have built, you know, over time, because, um, you know, in this sense, uh, we are all truly in it together. I mean, I can't tell you, 
um, you know, how many um, how many new relationships as CEOs that we've built. Um, there are lots of opportunities for us to get together, whether it's on Zoom calls or Microsoft Teams or or WebEx. Um, but there's a lot of opportunities for us to come together and really, you know, solve some of the larger um, you know, systemic uh, issues. And so, you know, one of the things that I like to think about is the better normal. So, you know, we, we keep talking about the new normal. Let's talk about the better normal, which has uh, perhaps, you know, a little bit more balance um, than uh, than we had, um, you know, a year ago. I 100% agree with the assessment. And it's funny, early on, I, I really was thinking personally that, you know, this new normal meant we're just not going to be getting on airplanes. And then over time, the amount of time not actually seeing people face to face and the, the strain on relationships, either building them or improving them, reality hit. And I agree with you. Uh, I think there's going to be just more flexibility here, a little bit more of a blend. If you look at governments who really never govern from home, that, that's the biggest difference. I think more employees will get uh, uh, choices, but uh, I appreciate those comments. So I'd like to shift to high performance computing, really been in the limelight lately, if nothing else, uh, for scientific and, and medical reasons, either looking for a cure uh, or, or helping uh, uh, people get better. But high performance computing is more than just for uh, medical research. Uh, it's, it's really very valuable to CIOs uh, as well. Uh, many of those who are on this call today, can you talk a little bit uh, about the applicability of high performance computing for them? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, high performance computing is, you know, sort of our mantra at uh, at AMD. It's all about how do we push the envelope of what computing can do for you. And, you know, at the very, very high end, it, it is these supercomputers uh, that are being used to uh, to help with COVID-19 research or, you know, a whole bunch of, you know, other things. But you know when you when you take the technology that you develop for high performance computing, that's you know high performance processors and the interconnects and all of that stuff, um, what you're able to do is uh, you know really address um, a whole number of workloads. And um, you know again from the very you know complex um, you know simulation you know based workloads, whether it's for finance or for um, you know, for research um, to, you know, now, um, and, you know, Pat, I know you and I have talked about this a lot, you know, this whole hybrid world that's existing. So the idea that, um, you know, many businesses will have both um, their on-prem um, computing as well as what they can do, um, you know, uh, in the cloud and, you know, the, the cloud variety that you have now um, that's optimized for different workloads, um, you know, allows you to do, you know, a whole bunch of different things. So I think the main point is um, one would be surprised at how much uh, computing has has changed and how much we can do now. Um, you know, I can tell you even in our own case, um, we were very much an on-prem uh, type uh, company, you know, yeah, you know, thinking that hey, right. when we're doing our products, we want to do everything in house. But um, you know, the the cloud environment has proven to be very, very flexible for for us and and for many of our customers. Yeah, it is interesting, uh, and I'm sure you've seen this over the last thirty years. It always seems this uh, you know we're looking for the killer app, uh, and then we find it, and then we 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 question the value of hardware. And uh, we hit things like uh, machine learning and big data analytics. Uh, I haven't heard anybody uh, ask why I need all this performance for about five years. And I think that's that's great for the industry, uh, but I think it's great for enterprise outcomes as well because we're just smarter. And it's not just the highest end elite enterprises. It's it's everybody. It's it's been democratized and. I have to give you a lot of kudos, uh, Lisa, for democratizing for so many people high performance uh, computing. Well, I, I appreciate that, uh, Pat. I think we all we've all done a, a big part in it. But the the most interesting thing, I think, to your point, is not only are people saying, "What am I?" Not, you know, they're not asking, "What are you going to use performance for?" They're actually saying, "I need more." And 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 it's you know it, it, you mentioned you know machine learning and and big data analytics. I I, I think. You know, the, the feeling is we're still at the very infancy of what we can do, you know, with those technologies and, and we're all learning, you know, in the process. Yeah, there's just going to be a ton of opportunity for everybody out there. And, and speaking about the future, let, let's pivot to the future as, as a second. As, as the CEO 
uh, of a major semiconductor company, uh, you have to make bets uh, on a three to five, actually architecturally probably on a seven year basis. Uh, but you're also uh, filling FAPs, which have these massive capital uh, ex expenditures with your partners. Uh, what advice would you give to IT leaders uh, about uh, navigating the uncertainty uh, of our current situation? Yeah, that's a great point. Um, you know, I think, you know, all of us have have thought, you know, a lot about, you know, short term versus long term. Um, I will say, though, fundamentally for all of us in tech and spe specifically, you know, when you're thinking about, you know, what you're trying to accomplish over the next, um, you know, three to five years, um, we must think at the foundational level, you know, fundamental level of what do you need? What problems are you trying to solve? Um, how do we affect those, you know, with our partners? Like for us, it's about, you know, you know, how do we really stay above the performance curve so that, you know, we're giving people more uh, performance per dollar uh, with um, with each generation. And, and those are things that, you know, are not temporal. Um, you, you know, you, you don't optimize over the next month or two. You really make decisions on, hey, what's the next node process technology? Um, what's the next node architecture? Um, who are the partners that you want to partner with and develop a long-term roadmap? I, I think that's those things are really key. And and the uh, the fact is, the closer we work together, you know, in different disciplines, so silicon systems, um, you know, software and user. Um, the better we're going to be able to affect those outcomes. And, and so I'm a big fan of deep, deep partnerships, you know, talking about, hey, what problems are you trying to solve if you're in the financial industry or if you're, um, you know, trying to solve a, um, a, a difficult technical problem? And, and, and we can think about how we can help you solve those with um, innovations in, in silicon and systems. I think those are very uh, sage words of advice, uh, Lisa. And, and I think... Uh, it, with an incremental level of credibility, uh, as I've watched you lead AMD uh, over the past few years, and uh, super impressed. I mean, it's you've been on a meteoric uh, rise uh, on, on all fronts. And, and with that said, what advice would you give uh, other leaders of companies looking to drive the highest degree of excellence uh, from their organizations uh, or large teams? Well, you know, Pat, um, first of all, thank you for those kind words. Those are very nice. Um, but uh, what I would say is um, it, it really is about um, a journey. You know, we, we've been on a journey uh, for um, the last five years. You know, we're, we're looking at our next journey for the next five years. Um, it is um, about consistency in what we say to our customers and what we what we commit and what we deliver. Um, and then it, it, it's about having a great team, right? A team that um, that really is extraordinarily ambitious in um, in what you're trying to accomplish, um, but we're able to operationalize it. And and that's that's sort of how I view it, right? Um, you know, as we as we build these um, relationships with um, you know some of the the largest IT providers in the world. Um, it is about bringing consistency and bringing, you know, our best game um, every single day. Uh, I've been following AMD for 30 years. Uh, I've interacted a lot uh, with, I think, four CEOs uh, at, at, at AMD. And, and Lisa, what I'm really struck by has been the consistency of your strategy. If I go back to, uh, many years ago to your financial analyst day, and I look at what your objectives were and what you wanted to do and your strategy of how you wanted to do it, it's remarkably consistent. And sure, you made a few tactical pivots along the way, which is just smart, uh, a smart business, but uh, there's a lot of value to that, uh, of getting your team aligned, uh, your partners trust you more because you do exactly uh, what you say you're gonna do. And I think finally, uh, what I really appreciate it, because in my heart, I'm a product person too, is let's deliver great uh, products. Oh, that, that's absolutely right. We wake up every day thinking about that, Pat. And um, like I said, we're very lucky uh, that we're in this market that is just tremendously exciting. And, um, you know, sort of the, the, the core of what we need to do with uh, digital transformation. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, whenever I whenever I hear people say uh, software is eating the world, uh, uh, not I don't correct them, but but I say, well, actually, 
hardware is eating the world too. You uh, still need hardware. All right. As a exactly. product, as software is, you still need hardware. So Exactly. So with that, Lisa, uh, we're coming up on time, but I just want to thank you so much for making the 6.5 Summit uh, even uh, better. And um, next year, we, we'd love to have you on. Uh, but for now, uh, this is Pat Moorhead for More Insights and Strategy, uh, signing off with Lisa Sue, uh, President and CEO of AMD. Thank you so much, Pat. Great to be here.